Hi everybody, so in this beginner's guide tutorial video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up and configure your Nitrado Armor 3 server. And in particular, we're going to be discussing a scenario where you're renting a small server for you and a few friends to play your own little part of Armor um, online, say using a few um, cheats, say simple, simple player, cheat menu and web knights two primary weapons and sog ai um, but also you want to use the dlc or the c dlc so we're going to be looking at installing prairie fire or any of the other dlc as well um, in that sort of friendly um, player versus environment sort of co-op sort of situation um, which is a great way of playing armor three with friends um, so first thing obviously you're going to want to go to Nitrado, there's a link in the description below this video if you scroll down a little bit and you'll you know, rent your server, 10 slots is more than enough for most people. Um, and then once it's set itself up you'll see something like this in your uh, Nitrado um, website and you want to go to the web interface and that will then take you to your dashboard. Um, and on your dashboard, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll find your FTP credentials. Now, if you're going to be installing mods, especially some of the bigger mods, you really want to know how to use FTP and you want to have access to something like FileZilla to upload these larger files rather than relying on the web browser that's included uh, in Nitrado. You've also at the top, we've got our direct connect details here. Although if you can't see your server, in the Armour 3 server browser, you've probably done something wrong. Now, where we really get started is in the settings general here. So if we click on here and we scroll down, if you've come from the world of, say, um, PC uh, Daisy servers, for example, some of this will seem familiar. And once you get your head around it, you'll go, all oh, right, this is all starting to click into place. So what we have here is we have our additional mod setting. Now, this is very important. This is um, a little line that edits the batch file, the start.bat file that controls certain things that the server starts with when it does a restart. And you've got mods and you've got CDLC, which is here. So you can see here we have VN standing for uh, Vietnam or Prairie Fire and again in the description below this video you'll find a link to this page here which has the different codes for the different DLC so Global Mobilization, GM, Prairie Fire, VN, Iron Curtain, CSLA etc. Now at the time of recording this video I haven't had a chance to check to see whether Spearhead 1944 the new one works or not you could also have more than one dlc loaded at the same time you can have say vn and western Sub sahara all you need to make sure you do is separate them with a semicolon and that way when you get into the server and you when you get into the mission select screen you'll have access to all of the different missions that way then we have our mods here um, and for example, we're going with automatic view distance, CBA3, Web Knights 2 primary weapons, um, SOG AI, and simple player cheat menu. Although, really, you don't really need to have them on there because, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. Um, out. Now, just by putting these mod titles in the mod section, doesn't mean they're installed we're just telling the server to start with these mods and you get the names of these mods from your armor 3 workshop folder which i'll show you how to find in a minute in fact if you just click up there at the top of the screen you'll find the address so in my case it's on the e drive yours could be c i guess steam library steam apps common armor 3 workshop you may well have to go into the armor 3 uh, folder settings to display hidden uh, folders because the workshop is often hidden and then you've got all the names so you can just left click left click again and then you can right click the name and then copy it through we we're going to cover that in just a moment so that's that's the important bit now we want to go on to config files this is a bit that trips most people up so if we go into the config file this is very similar to the daisy server dz.config um, but slightly different now what i've done to make things a bit easier so you can get your server running straight away up on my um, github repository and on my mega uh, repository i've got an example server config file where you can just download it or copy it all and paste it into your server and then just change the relevant bits and then you'll have a working server.config file that will allow you to go into a server 
and be into at the mission select screen. So let's just go through some of the things. So host name, again, you put your name, armor server, password, you'll put your password in, password admin, make that one a little bit more complicated and server command password, use it the same. Now, again, you'll want a password because what we're creating is we're not creating a public server for anybody to join. This is for us and our mates because we're gonna leave certain things open that could be open to abuse if we allow anybody to come into it. So scroll down a bit, we then have message of the day. Mine says scale speeders armor three server. Obviously you would change yours to whatever it is. And then we add this admin section. Now this is really cool because it allows us, if we get our Steam ID and enter it where all these X's are, that when we get onto the server and we log in using the chat command, the server will recognize us as an admin straight away. And it'll say, right, you're an admin. When you choose a mission, that's the mission we're doing. And it will give you certain powers when you're in-game as well. You can access the debug console, for example. And again, in the description below this video, you'll find a link to how to find your unique Steam ID, which you can then copy and paste into there. Now, also going down a bit, we've changed the verify signatures to zero. Now, the reason why we do this is because what this command does is it makes sure that anybody who's joining the server only had the mods that the server wants. However, if we want to use something like the single, sing, simple single player cheat menu mod or SOG AI, they're not designed to be used in multiplayer situations. So they don't come with a public key that you could use to put them on a server or they don't come with one that I could find anyway. So by saying zero, we're saying, look, server, don't check to see what mods people have when they join. Just let them join anyway. The danger of this is obviously in a public environment, people could join with any sort of mod and start flying around with a jetpack or something like that. But we're just going to be playing with friends, people we know in a password protected server. So this is cool. You just need to make sure that people know the core mods they need to load. In this case, it's um, automatic view distance, CBA and Web Nights 2. Um, primary weapons and they can have single player cheat mod installed as well and then they could have um, SOG, SOG AI although I'd probably recommend only one person uses SOG AI at a time because the features that you get anyway that seem to be a little bit restricted with SOG AI but it does still seem to be worth installing and I'll show you when we get into the game what I mean. Um, so we scroll down a little bit more you'll see that we have also disabled battle eye I found that I was getting disconnected um, with a battle light error that it would say host not talking or host not connected or something. So just turned it to zero. Battle eye is the anti-cheat. Again, we're going to be playing with friends on this server, people we know already. Hopefully none of them are going to be using hacks or anything um, in the game, so we can disable that. And then at the bottom you'll see, and this is different to how this file looks when you first set up your server. <coughs> Excuse me, got a bit of a tickly throat. Class missions is blank, there's nothing here. We do this so that when you um, log into your server, when you get into your server, you're faced with the mission select screen rather than being thrown into a mission straight away. And I think that that's very important that way. So once you've changed that, <coughs> excuse me, or you've um, copied and pasted my one and you've changed the bits that you should have, like the password and all the names, save that and you can restart your server and that bit will be done. Next though, we need to make sure we upload our mods. Again, if you come from the world of DayZ and DayZ servers, this should all be fairly familiar. When you connect to your server, you just go to the Armor 3 and we're gonna upload our mods to the root directory of the server. So like I said before, if you find out where your workshop folder is, so in my case, it's E, Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common and Armor 3 Workshop, yours might be C, you can just right click, copy that, Go to there, paste that onto there, press enter, that will take you to the right place. And then all we need to do is upload these to, excuse me, to the server. So for example, automatic view distance, we would just right click that upload and then it would upload it to the server. Then we go into the keys folder of the mod, go into the keys folder of the server, and then we'd right click and upload that, and that will go across there. Again, with SOG AI and the simple single player cheat menu, there is no key, but that's why we had to set that other thing earlier. Once you've uploaded the mods that you want, simply restart your server, and then you're pretty much good to go. So you fire up the armor launcher, go into the DLC, make sure you've selected the DLC, 
go to the mods make sure you've got the mod selected that you want to be using again the server is not going to check that you've got the right mods so don't load too much and don't load anything you um, don't want to have again maybe what you would do in this case is you say okay guys what i want you to have loaded is web nights two primary cba3 and automatic view distance um and then as the admin you're going to have sug ai and simple single player cheat menu although <coughs> my thoughts are that when players are new to armor 3 it can be so difficult to learn and tricky to do there's nothing wrong with a bit of cheating so i'll probably let everybody have the access to simple single player cheat menu so that way they can turn on invincibility if they want they can teleport around the map if they get killed and they spawn back in the wrong place they can change their loadout to something if they make a mistake or they drop their gun um and you know you're all playing together and then as you and your friends become better at armor 3 and want a more immersive experience you can lock it down you, you could turn that off um, but now we sort of hit play and this is going to fire us up dumpty 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 dum here we go now your armor might look a little bit different um, because i've got some settings to make it run a little bit better um, and again if you're running vanilla armor i don't know if i mentioned this this would be completely empty additional mods but everything else is the same um, and you'll get the vanilla armor bit pop up when, when we load in but because this is prairie fire we're going to get the a version of the prairie fire sla uh, for splash screen without the animation so now we go to multiplayer server browser server browser and then if you go to um, modded and then search for so for example with me scale speed it comes up um, or it would be on recent and then you could favor it as well if we go to details you'll see it lists all the mods that i've got loaded and says yeah you can have all of these because the server doesn't check we can click connect again you would put your password in mine's already there and we click connect now once we're in we are just logged in at the moment as a normal player all right um, and if we were to select a mission, so we go to Kam Lao Nam, set it for regular, um, let's do eldest son, instead of vote, <coughs> we'd now be voting. And then there would be a wait. But if we go back, if we type slash login, sorry, type slash to bring up the chat and type hash login, oop, that will log in me as an admin because it knows who I am. If you hadn't put in your Steam ID earlier into that bit into the server config file, you have to go uh, slash to bring up chat, hash login, space, and then put the admin password, and that would let you in. And that means now is when I pick a mission, say Camelo Nam, I want to do Eldest Son, or I don't know, Bright Light, hit continue, we, we choose it straight away. There's no countdown. It's like you're the admin, you're choosing the mission. So now that's me, so I could press press that we're in the lobby other players that come in they could then choose all their roles that they want to take on as they're going along um, and then we would just say okay and this is now is going to load us in I mean another reason for doing this would be not only just playing with friends but if you wanted to test to see whether you could get better performance out of single player armor 3 um, so for example in spearhead 1944 the performance when you're playing Operation Cobra single player on your local PC is a bit crap um, but by running on a, on a remote server that may well be not as bad and that'd be something I'm going to be doing some investigating about so as you can see we're on the, we're on the server um, and if I press M to bring up the map I can load up a single single player cheat menu so now as I could go into the virtual arsenal I could change my loadout um, I could um, turn invincibility on I could teleport around the map that sort of stuff uh, turn on the bullet cam this is fun. Sergeant Meyer call sign seal. That. I'll be advising Brilliant. you during this mission every spike team spends a week and every month standing bright light duty how cool is that okay but the other thing you can do obviously is spawn in SOG AI now this doesn't work completely right at the time I'm recording this video and um, what happens is they won't respond to commands but you can use the vanilla command system to command them around and also some of the other features that SOG AI includes are worth having. So if we choose group to spawn, so Recon Team Columbia, I can change my loadout if I wanted to, which is very useful. But what happens is they won't follow these commands. They don't take the um, those commands. 
See, they're just sort of standing there. You've got to use the vanilla command. So you've got to press the tilde key, the one next to one, and you've got to do, you know, um, regroup. And then you, you're just using the vanilla commands. But you still have access to things like um, tail gunner place mine, uh, being able to use radio support all the time, and really importantly, um, you have access to, and I'll show you by going into the map and we're going to teleport somewhere so teleport enabled so if we go to uh, Saigon oh, oh I just managed to crash it very good very good wasn't very good was it let's fire that up again maybe that wasn't the best example <laughs> to show you Servers, mods, play. What I was basically going to show you there was if you teleport somewhere, if you um, are in a situation where your AI teammates have become stuck on a tree or aren't responding to what you're doing, what SOG AI also offers you is the ability in the command wheel, so when you scroll down your mouse wheel, to teleport AI members that are more than 75 meters away to your position, um, which is really, really, really useful. <laughs> Honestly, it's really useful to be able to do that. Um, so here we go. So multiplayer, server browser, server browser, recent. There we go. Let's join. Let's connect that way. Um, so it's still worth doing it. So let's do slash uh, hash login. So I'm the admin. Let's pick uh, recruit Kaolao Nam. Eldest son, continue. I'll be the one zero team leader. Okay. We'll spawn in. And I'll show you a couple of other things as well. I won't bother showing you how to teleport, <laughs> just in case it crashes again. And to, to be honest, this is probably the fourth time I've tried to do this video because I keep um, doing things wrong. Right, so let's continue. Okay. So, what other things can you do? Well, because I'm the admin, when I press escape, I have access to the debug console as well, which means that you can do things like um, change the time. Heads up, killer. This is Lieutenant Bowray. And you can do All things like um, I'll be advising you during your mission today. Change the weather. In planting that was already clear. Ammo in the past. You should too. But remember that no mission is routine. Um, you can kill people. Head over to um, you can turn off things like snakes and things like that in the debug console. The so what I will do as well is in the description below this video. I will do a link to the scripting commands, and in particular, the one you want to look at is probably the environmental scripting commands, where you can go in and you can change things. Now, I'm no expert at scripting commands, but they are very, very powerful, and you can do all sorts of other things as well within uh, the debug console um, that I don't really know about because I'm not that um, advanced with Armor 3. But here we go. Let's get these in. The other thing that happens actually with... Um, these guys I found is they don't respond to the wheel but they do respond to the vanilla controls um, but they also say funny things as well um, they have they seem to be having different shout outs as well like we're being attacked when we're not being attacked um, but I think we all agree the ability to spawn in a load of AI teammates is very very useful and the ability to be able to um, call, call them. So basically, you'll scroll down and you'll see a thing that says teleport far players to players' position. And that way, the ones that have got stuck behind a rock or something like that will then catch up with you um, and you'll have a team ready to go as well. Okay, so hopefully this video has been useful. I know we've covered a lot of ground here, um, but I think the ability to be able to host your own um, Armour 3 server, to have your own private part of Armour on your Nitrado server is um, really, really important and makes, you know, adds quite a lot of the, to the game. And I, for one, I'm really looking forward to seeing what we can do with this sort of thing. And I'll be doing lots of more Nitrado server tutorials um, as time goes on. Anyway, that's enough from me. If you've enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And I will, of course, see you again soon.